Kirsten, I'm a biologist, and I'm here to tell you a ghost story. Now, before I get sort of vigorously shunned by the Faculty of Science, I should probably start from the beginning. For the last two years of my life, I've been running around the bush at night trying to catch these guys, eastern betongs. They're a marsupial, they're distantly related to wallabies, they're about this big and adorable, and they've gone extinct everywhere except Tasmania. Now, when I catch them, I take an ear piercing from them and I let them go on their way. Now this skin sample allows me to analyse their DNA. I'm using a technique called next generation sequencing, which allows me to obtain a unique genetic fingerprint called a genotype from each individual. The more closely related two individuals are, the more similar their genotypes. This lets me study gene flow. Basically, gene flow between two places tells us that betongs in the past have moved between those places and reproduced successfully, passing their genes on to the next generation. So, by studying the DNA of betongs now, I can learn about the movement of animals in the last few decades and centuries, kind of like a ghost story written in genetic code. Now this particular ghost story takes place in the Tasmanian Midlands. Most of the bushland here has been cleared for farming since Europeans arrived, and I want to understand what effect this is having on the betongs. I started by studying betongs in large, well-connected patches of habitat, kind of like the one in the top right on the slide. In these areas, you'd expect that betongs can still move around quite freely, and so they'd all be fairly closely related, uh, like the individuals shown by the blue DNA on this slide. So far, my results suggest that this is the case. Next, I want to study betongs in smaller patches of habitat that have been cut off from other patches by farmland. I want to see if the betongs in these areas have become isolated from other populations, and hence are becoming genetically distinct, and possibly inbred and unhealthy. I also want to test whether landscape features, like roads, are reducing animal movement, which would result in the populations on either side becoming genetically distinct from each other. But why tell this story at all? Well, it's to do with ghosts again, the ghosts of the 30 mammal species that have gone extinct in Australia since Europeans arrived. Clearing of native vegetation has played a big part in many of these extinctions. I'm working with Greening Australia, who are working to save native species by replanting trees and restoring vegetation in the Midlands. But in order to put the right plants in the right places, they need to know how animals used to move around the region in the past, and they also need to know how different landscape features like roads or big cleared areas might be currently stopping animal movement or preventing gene flow. If my research can figure this out, then it will help to write a new story for betongs in the future, but this one with a happy ending. Thank you. <laughs>